the Sankey Sliding Centre outside of Sochi in Russia. The venue for the 2014 Winter Olympic Games and also for the ninth and final four-man bobsleigh competition of the Wiesmann FIBT World Cup Series. Hello everybody, I'm Martin Haven. Sitting alongside me is John Morgan at this brand new facility. John, the first time an official four-man race has taken place on this track. And if it's anything like the previous four races staged in the last three days on this track, we're in for some exciting times. The structure is absolutely magnificent, what they built here in Russia. They have set a standard that I don't know if anybody else will be able to match for a long time. The start area, I mean, it's a vertically it's, it's as steep as any track that comes down, but they've got the three uphill sections, Martin, which finds it, you know, takes away the speed, and it's a very interesting challenge for the pilots. They're all talking about, they're all talking about the curves up top here. Curve five is being the real pivotal part of the track, because if you screw up five, you have no chance to recover any more time. There's two, three speeds up here aren't that great. But now it gets tricky right here. You can see the vibration off the ground here. First five, this little up to the first uphill section. Right there. And then this long straightaway. Now the sled starts to motor and they get this, again, the three transitions from flat to uphill. And it's almost like a jump coming up right here. And it's, uh, the athletes said they just are not used to this. Right here is this section coming down, you down quickly. A lot of pressure. We saw a couple accidents so far there this week. Two men, Bob, right here's another uphill that puts the athletes' pressure on them. They decelerate a little bit. And the speeds, they don't get speeds like we had in Whistler, but it's not about speed here. It's about being precise. And then, as you call it, Martin, one of the longest outruns we've ever seen on a track. Yeah. Very very easy to get down. Very challenging track to get down fast. Well, it is. It's very easy to give away time, and that's going to be the secret here. Well, Max Arndt, our world champion, is not here. He was rushed in for emergency surgery. Nothing major but awkward that needed doing straight after he won the world championship in Samaritz two weeks ago. So Alexander Zubkov will have a free reign to take the Crystal Globe as the World Cup champion. Zubkov already with four wins this season and the Russian looks odds on to take that title whether he can win here or not in the four-man though remains to be seen John he was disappointing in yesterday's two-man race only tied for fourth with Lyndon Rush who ended up with the Crystal Globe in two-man yeah the Russians only have one medal so far in the four competitions the silver in men's skeleton there's Zubkov you talk about pressure of a country on your shoulders I mean there might be an elephant on his back I mean yeah. it's he needs to produce today, and not to produce just a podium, he needs to produce the gold. Well, two degrees of air temperature, it's been trying to snow most of the day, but the whole track, as you can see here, and there is uh, Jürgen Lewacker looking down the track, the whole track covered from start to finish from this vast five-story cathedral. Camera here with the athletes warming up on the warm-up track, that's three stories up, looking down into the area where the sleds are all prepared. John, this is just, just it's a on a scale that nobody has ever seen. Nothing, nothing, and the athletes are walking out here going, wow, what a facility they've built for us. It's John Jackson from Great Britain, who's had some great times in training all week. And the Russians, well, there are so many helpers here, the volunteers getting ready for the Olympic Games, learning the disciplines. Manny Mahata, who'll start second. Dmitry Tukhanov, there's the, the, the yeah. Zubkov team right Three there. Three Russian teams in our entry list, and they will all be hoping to perform well here. Thomas Florschutz is the first of our starters. Top 10 in the World Cup rankings go into a random draw, and he ended up with draw number one. Alexander Zubkov and Alexander Kazyanov, the two Russians, will both go inside the second half of the top 10. 10. Bert Hefty, 10 spots. Dmitry Abramovich, the third Russian sled, goes off 11th. We have 26 sleds in the field. And for the first heat, they will all go in the second heat. That'll be cut to 20. So everybody who starts 15 or below is battling to try and get one of five places, essentially, in the field. And there's a bit of a crowd here as well at the start and down at the finish area. And for them, a first time ever in their own country to see sleds on ice. What a first-time sliding event for him to see. Four-man bobsled. Here's our Germany number one. So Thomas Florschutz, three bronze medals in the last three races. So he's really starting to find his four-man form. Ronnie Listner, Andy Bredow, Thomas Blaschek are the crew. 
German sleds have been flying on this track. Well, one thing we know, John, is he is going to set a start record because yeah. none exists, and it's now 4.94 4 seconds. Speed, 49.9. Keep track of the speed. I love the speed. That's the entry into the sled. I think the four-man sleds are going to go a lot straighter, have less problems than those little two-man sports cars. These big four-man trucks seem to go a lot straighter, and I think there's going to be a little bit more of a rail coming down that track. Floor Schutz is the rabbit. He'll be the first guy to show us how fast they're going to come down. And I got to believe the way he's been driving a two-man, the silver medalist in yesterday's competition, I got to believe he's going to be a, a medal hopeful, especially if he puts down, he keeps coming down with these lines. Little tap there. Aerodynamic perfect. There's that uphill section. One of the graveyards of time that I refer to on a track. You make a mistake in that uphill section, you can just bury your time. Track record 5601. They said we're going to get into the 55s. I think we're going to. So the start record and the track record established by Thomas Florschutz. Speed at the bottom over 84 miles an hour. It's about standard for the tracks that they built in Torino, Salt Lake, Nagano. Nothing like we did in Whistler, we're up to 93 miles an hour. Look at the start. Very good start track for powerful four-man teams like the Germans possess. In, down quickly. Watch the arms come up and in. Look at that cohesion. Now look at the line here. This is where we're going to be seeing up near the roof all day. We saw some two-man sleds hit the roof. And now look at the exit of the curve. Look at the aerodynamic profile of the German team. Look at Froschitz looking at the monitor, making sure everything's coherent. Second bar German sleds, Manuel Mahata with Alex Mann, Jan Speer, and Christian Poser behind him, the four-man crew of Germany too. And he doesn't get the starts oh. that his teammate does. Oh, but he does there. 493, Whoa. great effort. And Whoa. Alex Mann and he went was... over his driver, only just getting in. Now, I think that's their normal procedure. Yeah. I think they do that. They wait for the three and four guy to sit down before the two-man locks himself in. But he's already back in red numbers. So he already made a mistake. A good start. Oh, that's but, a bad oh, mistake there. Climbs high out of corner five Foul. into six. Oh, they think he almost got near the roof on six. Yeah, he did. So I told you that five, six, pivotal part of the track. It's our first graveyard. There's another one coming up here. Nine to ten. Three pressure corner, corner ten. He's riding the first pressure very yeah, high. He's lost a lot of time up there in five. Two tenths back, skid there. That won't cost us. But watch this uphill section here. Boy, I love that shot. It's a big compression there. Oh, they come skid. down and dip. He is wild on this track. I didn't think the four mans would get that wild, but they will. Well, anything will if you 50s. can't control the speed. 56, 43, so... That's over, way up. Yeah, four that tenths is, of a second back. That is way up. Either Manuel Mahata just did a, the worst possible run he could think of, or Florschutz was that good. I mean, uh, I don't know. I think Mahata wasn't that good. I think, I think combination of two, yeah. Here's the first mistake. Look at him come off, gets a little loose coming off the exit of five. That is a hard hit up in there where the speeds are slow. Only about 60 kilometers, 40 miles an hour up there. Now watch how he climbs here. He's wrong into six. And he goes up. Ooh, oh, he hits, he hit the the wood. hits the wood. Yeah. Won't be the last guy hitting the wood today. Ray Spies having words with him. He knows where the mistakes are. He will have felt them. Our third starter then, Oscars Melbardis. Start record 4.94. Why are we saying this? Because this may well be the fastest crew on the planet. Damas Driskins, Arvis Vilcasta, and Intars Danvis. They don't dominate the start of four men as much as the two men, but Martin, I think they could they could go under 90. And these are big men. Watch these get in, get down quick. Floppy, 481, that is ridiculous. <laughs> oh my, unbelievable. What I just said, well, they don't do as well in the four man, wrong. Oh my. Do you think oh, they hurt you? Oh, oh, I hope they don't watch the replay. Oh, they will. Well, I'll be getting out of town, so I don't have to worry about well, dealing they, with them. The my. next race, they'll come to us, will be the beginning of next season. And the other Latvian sled's been just as good all week yeah. long in practice. If he keeps, well, he's lost time back already. That's but I'd expect that. Forshut's much more experienced driver, but with a start time like that, Ooh, no this little small nation of Latvia producing athletes like this to the sport of bobsledding. Uphill section. No speed wow. at all. He'll go oh, into the red. Big skid there. Yeah. He's down, but still, he won't catch Forshut's on the bottom, but boy, did he give us a ride up on the top part of the track.
I tell you what, his sled quicker than Manuel Mahata at the bottom of the track as well. So he wow. found some more pace in the lower section of the track than wow. Mahata could. Wow, wow, yeah. wow. Next year on this track, if you can get a bet down, wow, this, this guy is... He's had this. one bronze medal in the World Cup this season, but you're right, in 12 months. Oh, <sighs> look at that. And these are large men. Look at Doutman's on the right side of our screen. Now watch how these, these four guys got to hop in this small bathtub. Watch him get in. I mean, this is not easy. They're running at 20 miles an hour. Get in. Now watch him get, wait for each other, get the feet in there, and watch the arms come up, down quickly. Not as cohesive as the Germans, but my... What a start record. Oh, here's the mistakes up top, a little exit of the curve problem. But still, there is Mel Bardis. And here is our two-man World Cup champion. Tied it up yesterday with a fourth-place finish with Jesse Lumsden, Lascelles Brown, and Neville Wright. All the big men on the start crew for Lyndon Rush of Canada. I would expect these guys get in the sled a lot quicker than the Russians or than the Latvians. They got a skid there, though. Yeah, a little 498. skid. Speed 49.3. That's a half a kilometer down. I think that little skid, somebody got in the sled with a little push left to right because that sled was not straight into the first curve. And this will be reflective of the time. Already down two tenths. And that's a skid there on yep. five. I mean, Shows it off five. five is, five well, five is five, such a graveyard. The two men and the four men have yeah. all skidded off it. The skeleton athletes were talking about five being a problem. Nobody's got it figured out. So we'll just give that graveyard number one designation. 126 kilometers an hour is three kilometers down, four skidding. kilometers down. He's skidding. I mean, I, I said the four mans are going to go straight. They are not. They're really coming across this ice. Four ships had the perfect rail run in the sled being on the rails all the way down. To this one, 73. Yeah. That is a lot. Look at the coaches. Dan Richardson, they, they just, they just, yeah. whoa, they're perplexed there. That's I'm not happy with that. Usually four man bobsledding, you got 15, 1800 separates the top six, eight sleds. Here, we're, we got the first four sleds down, and one of them's rush, and we're separated by 7300s. Here it is, the climb and the exit here up near the roof. Watch the runner tips here. Watch him come over to the right side of our screen. Now, the back end's at a skid. Yeah. See that? He's skidding down that whole straightaway, seven, eight, nine. There's a little chink yeah. there. That's 12 and 13, that straightaway. So, got the exit off 11 completely wrong. Now then, first of our Russians, what are we going to expect to see from Alexander Kazyanov, I wonder? The crew, Ilva Hutsin, Max Belugin, and Peter Masayev, experienced guys, maybe not quite as fast as Alexander Zubkov's. Well, one of these guys are brand new because we don't have the headshot. So one of these, they've shuffled up the crew. Yeah. This is a big run for Kasanov. He needs to post a top four or five time. Well, he's a silver medal behind winner Alexander Zubkov in Whistler. He got a bronze in La Plan as well. 491. Speed, speed, 49.8. Great. Now let's see if he's got curve five figured out. He's been down the track way more than everybody else. Well, I see a lot of helmets and shoulders back there in that sled. Into the red already. Watch him on a curve five. It's not bad. Right here. That's good. Six. Up near the wood. Not bad. And that was a much lower line yeah, than we see from lines. anyone else. These are these are their best line since four shots. Holds it nicely off yeah. seven. This into is a nine. good run. This looks like at least a second place run. Five hundreds behind is all. Speed though, not not what four shots had. Four shots. Who is one thirty? Oh, there's a skid there in that long straightaway. Still only nine hundredths of a second, John. He's still there. Yeah. Yeah, he's starting to drop back a little bit. That could be related to that one little skid and that long straightaway in the chink. Third place, 2300s behind. Mel Bardis is second. Florschutz, your race leader. Pierre Luders, the coach there in the cap, was moderately okay with that. Yeah, I, I think that's happy. a barometer. That's a barometer for Zuka. Now, Kasanov had the second best start time. That's what's been plaguing him all year. You give him a good start time, he's competitive. Here's the problem for him the skid you can't get these big sleds in a skid but when you do boy can you erase some time yeah. and he had a skid going on that whole length of that straight away. thomas floor shoots the race leader from oscars malbalis of latvia alexander kazyanov just driving himself into third A lot of bustle at the top of this Sankey sliding center track. First time ever World Cup four-man racing in Russia. 
sixth of our 26 starters in the first of two heats here. Reiko Peder of Switzerland with Thomas Ruf, Patrick Blersinger and Seaman Friedley. The team talking to you, Martin Haven, and alongside me, John Morgan. And John, with Bert Hefty starting his season late, Rico is the de facto number one in Switzerland, even though he's yet to win a race in format. And he gives up a lot of time at the start, but there's one thing we know. These FES, or these City of Sleds from Switzerland, two, four, and women's sleds have really been flying on this track. Not a great start. Same fact, as Thomas Forshitz, the race that's leader. Yeah. That's good for them. They're getting stronger and stronger all yeah. season. I've been most impressed with their progress. I, they have really, really impressed. He's had a great year. And uh, he had a medal position after three runs at the World Championships in St. Moritz and fell to... Six. Top six, yeah. but still a great result for him in Switzerland. And I think that's given him the confidence in here to Sochi. And with that type of start, and the, he's got a chance. But, boy, he's got no speed. He's seven kilometers an hour oh. down. Way off the pace. Six to that skid, oh, too. And, and that's that. just like putting the brakes yeah. on on the car. And he's still got skids going. And the uphill, oh. you saw how steep it was there into 15. Climbed way high. He doesn't have this figured out at all. The track. I told you four bands are going to come down the track pretty straight. I was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> These guys got a challenge. Don't worry, we'll edit all this out when it goes on air, yeah. Oh. 56, 62 slides, six attempts But he still, he still beat Lyndon Rush, yeah. the witches. Tells you how bad Lyndon Rush had the first run. But well, what a season Rush has had. Two six places, but as low as 18th in other races. Yeah, a little inconsistent. Look at this skin. He gets the take on. Watch him climb. And then here, watch the up and down here. Way up high. Os oscillation point, pressure point, back up. G-force. Look at the heads. Look at the pressure on the, on the heads and watch this flop. Boom. That's a lot of right to left action at 75 miles an hour. That's not good for your time at the bottom. Top of the track, Stephen Holcomb in the USA with Justin Olsen, Steve Langton, Kurt Tomasiewicz. The Olympic champion will come here in less than 12 months to defend his title, John. Let's see him get in the sled with the 484. Speed, 50.3, the best speed. Oh, big skid there, though. Yeah. Got a curve, too. That's going to be, those red is going to turn into green pretty quick. Oh, excuse me, the green's going to be into red. That skid, boy, I'm surprised at that. He's got 900 lead. I'll be surprised if he can hold that down. Oh, and a One huge skid out of five. Skid. Oh, oh, he bangs there before he goes in. Surely he's got to be in the red. The long yeah, run there it to is. the next block. Yeah, he's he... gone from a tenth up to a tenth back. And you that never, you him never so see speed. him make mistakes like that. You saw Peter just come down the track like he's driving a two man. Holcomb the same. Again, a big skid there. 14 to 15 is clean. Boy, that start time he had, he made that mistake. Now he's four tenths back. Now he's, 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 he's buried. No speed at the bottom. And that's driver error there. That's, yeah. you know, I think Hulk will be the first guy to tell you that was not a good trip by the Olympic champion. Shakes his head. You can see it. A half second back. Very disappointed with himself over that. Boy, that's up top of the track. We've seen nobody in the exit of curve two. With that type of start, with the best start speed right here. Comes off and watch the skidding. Look at the whole sled is sideways. Dropped off late, and the tail, the caboose of the night train, was doing the driving there and again here. Yeah, watch the again, it's sideways. Yep, again holding it on the corner okay. too long. The yes. rear end drops down, and not, there's the skid. Nah, look at that. Oh, and the five and six. Look at that. That yeah. is his worst. Look at he saw it. Yeah. That's not much of a trip, and Hulky knows it. Next up, John Jackson at Great Britain, Stu Benson, Bruce Tasker, and Joel Fear on the, the crew with George, their foreman. Penultimate race run of their season. Should have a good start. In well, that's mid 80s. One of, one of the things that impressed so much this season. Cohesion of a four man start. In, down, 488, speed, 50. 49.9. See that? The start. There's one thing about the start, and then the second thing is just getting in the sled. And I, think there, I think that there's a real, real science of the way the athletes get in that sled. And some teams do it better than others, but then you got to drive. Look at that skid out of five to the six. Oh. Not as ugly as Holcomb. He's still no. in the green over Thomas Florschutz. Just two hundreds at the last clock, and it's gone back yeah. down a tenth. Couple skids up top, and you, next thing you know, you're in the red. 128 to 130.7 of Floor Schutz, the leader. Still hanging in there, though. 
Hit tap, that's not going to be too costly. Uphill section. Fourth place run at the moment. Gets relatively clean off 15. 16 and 17 now start to head downhill to the line. 134.2 is the not second bad. quickest speed. Not bad considering the mistake up top. Lee Johnson there, the yeah. coaching. They didn't have the great start velocity we've seen. And you know, with that, you gotta have that 50 kilometer start velocity. Third fastest start, fourth place run. Here's a little late there. Well, John, the ice is different from how it was in training, and so those timings, you're going to be a hundred or so out, and that's all it takes to get that Well, they're that two seconds skip. faster. Yeah. They're two seconds faster than they were in training. Trust me, two seconds is a lot of speed. Oh, yeah. Alexander Zukov of Russia. Now the noise level is going to rise a little. I can't imagine the din in this cathedral of speed a year from now when he hits the ice. The first yell for Zubkov, the favorite. Now we'll tell a story. In the pre-Olympic test, since they've been running these World Cups starting in the early 90s, late 80s in Calgary, only one man has ever won a pre-Olympic test and went on to win the Olympic gold medal. That was Harold Chodai of, of Germany in 1993 in Lillehammer. He went on to win the gold in format. So Zubkov, Ooh, this is a race that the athletes talk about that you don't want to win. Yeah. Well, Zukov isn't going to try and toss this away. No, he needs this. The, the German or the Russian Federation needs to be in the lead here at the bottom. Yeah, if not, off seven gonna... as well. 128.8, 130 was back. four shots. It's coming back. Not a, not a very good exit there. He's not driving this as well as the German, and the speed is showing that. Oh, Three hundred back. This is for second at least, though. 135.5, no, 134.7. Second. Yeah. Wow. Only 700s. He really restrained himself there from giving away too much time. And he, that is definitely a race now. And he gave away. He had 1100s advantage on four shoots at the top, and only was 700s behind at the bottom. So, in all things being equal, he threw away three, three tenths down the track. Yeah. Now four shoots, he went early. He had the first guy out, so maybe that was advantage. But race on for the second heat. I think I think with the start advantage that he's got. Zubkov could catch him in the second run, and look, that's, mm -hmm. hello, that, the speed. that's floor shoots because he went down first. In the second run, that'll be more equal. Yep. I think Zubkov's going to come back and get him. Well, Zubkov there on the right with uh, Dmitry Stapushkin. He's got some work to do. Tenth of our starters in this first of two heats is our race winner from La Plan in France. A first career four-man win as a driver for Bert Hefty. He's got Alex Baumann, Thomas Lamparter, and Jörg Egger in this Swiss four-man crew. Listen how quiet it gets now. Four big men. And should be a decent start. I'd say a 90. 86. Wow, that is speed. a great start. 50.2. Great speed. Now let's see if he can be clean up here. Three. Not bad. Here comes the big albatross. Five, four. And here is what everybody says is the graveyard. Hey, not bad. Good entry. Six. No names on these curves, just numbers. Little skip to seven. The gap is now down to one hundredth of a second into ten. Three mm -hmm. big pressures. The last one right oh, on the exit. Late there. Hasn't got the speed. One thirty was skip. what the Germans had. Big steer there. He's a little out of control. Seven, eight, nine, ten, into 11, 12, all the way down. So it's about for eight. He's had a lot of issues. Still good enough for a top five. Six. Wow. He's right there, though, right behind John Jackson. And 300s in, her, in front of Manuel Mahata. So close battles. I like the track, though, the way it challenges everybody. I mean, everybody, you go to Winterberg and Innsbruck, people are coming right down the middle of the track. And it's uh, tough to even explain good, bad, or ugly. Here, no problem. Everybody can figure out that they're skidding across the ice there. The back end's out of way. And then watch him skier here. He went airborne yep. on the take on. He was airborne into the curve. And now he's a setup wrong. So he made the mistake up 100 meters up above that. And then it caught up with him all the way down into the uphill section. You're skidding in that uphill section. Sign up.
Thomas Florschutz leads Alexander Zubkov and Oscar Melvardis. Ten of our 26 sleds already down this Sankey sliding center. The final World Cup race in the four-man season. This is Dmitry Abramovich. Did not race here in the two-man yesterday. Very strange. On the back of his sled is one of the talismans here in Sochi, Alexei Vyavoda. A ripple of excitement follows him like he's a big rock star. Good start speed, 51. Now, this is a former junior world champion in 2007. Got into the Olympics in uh, Whistler, but then took a year off, I think, with a back injury. Uh, this kid's got talent. You give him a start time, he, uh, he could be in the top three here at the bottom with a good drive. Still leading at the moment out of corner six, neat and tidy. Seven, down this little short shoot that is corner eight into nine, the left-hander, and then setting up for ten. And this is the biggest corner on the track, John. A lot of Gs, a lot of oscillation points there. This is a good run. Looking neat and tidy. Do you know what? He's in sixth position at the moment, though. He could move up, though. Speed yeah. on the bottom. 28, lost a little bit there in that straightaway. Track could be getting chewed up, too. Yeah, well, these things Six. are heavy sleds. 56, 38, 200s behind there at Hefty, in front of there at Hefty, rather. Well, the Russians are going to put three sleds in the top seven or eight, that's for sure. And I got to believe that guy named Zukov, I still predict that he's going to win the gold in the second round. Well, the Russians are second, fourth, and sixth with Zukov, Kazyanov, and Abramovich now. And then Kazanov, he could still medal. Thomas Florschutz, Alexander Zubkov, Oscars Melvardis, the top three in the first heat at the moment. Twelfth of 26 sleds, World Cup number nine of the FIBT Vietman season. You can see Jan Verber of the Czech Republic there thinking his way through the final couple of motions before getting this sled underway with Martin Bowman, Jan Stoklaska, and Mikhail Vacek on the back of this Czech sled. Had a good year. Had a good result at Altenburg. Pretty good in the World Championships. Start. Who's drifting? 5.02. Now, that's not a competitive start to go and challenge the big boys. Not a great start speed. So now he's got to hit a home run on the way down the track. He's got to be absolutely perfect. No mistakes allowed. And We've seen only one sled come down with no mistakes. That was Thomas Forshitz, our leader. No mistakes that we saw. I don't want to give him a commentator mm -hmm. jinx, but uh, these aren't bad lines. Yeah. <laughs> mm, he makes it safely from 9 to 10, which is exactly why John was almost holding his breath there. 126.8 is not great speed either. No, and you can see a lot of helmets back there and shoulders, and that was late out of that curve, 14. The one thing we've noticed so much, John, is how loud and rattly all the sleds sound here. That's, that's always a fact in an artificial track, even more so when we've come from near silence in San Moritz. But the, the ice here is pretty rough and chattery. Well, it's, a, it's a, still a construction zone. We've had rain, warm temperatures all week long, very warm temperatures. I mean, plus 12. 20 degrees to Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Uh, on, and the track is taking a beating with all the sleds that have been coming down. Here's a little exit. Little right here in the six. Yeah. Watch him climb. He might have hit the wood. Yep, There's going to be much. a lot of marks up there before this uh, day is over. But there's a skid out of six seven. Didn't panic. Got it down safely. But there the track itself, the track itself is construction site dirt every place. The dirt's mixing with the ice. It has. It's not great ice. It's not Olympic ice. And they get some snow to cover here, and they get some landscaping here over the uh, over the summer, and then the snow next winter, the ice will be much better. Nick Cunningham for the USA, Adam Clark, Andy Drebel, and Chris Vogt on the sled. His first ever four-man World Cup race in Lake Placid took the bronze medal position. What a great start for a rookie season that was. He gets some good start times, this group. 487, top five start. Congratulations to them. Ooh, he had a little bit of the same type of issue on the Exeter two as Holcomb did. Good speed, 50.3 uh, and 74.7. That's great momentum for the crew as well. Still in the lead then over floor shoots. Ooh, rough, rough there. Ooh. Big skid into five. Curve five just got somebody else. That graveyard of time. Just here, take, take another 2,500 to yeah. the bottom as we go by. 
He just is an albatross for every discipline. Skeleton, woman's bob, everybody's had problems up in that curve five. Three tens back outside the top ten now for Cunningham. Into 15. Little bump on Ooh, the entrance. Big to 16. And you're not even over the brow there. You're still climbing into the entry of 16. Not the best time. The only best two sleds. Lyndon Rush being one of them. But, you know, great start time. Yeah, give him a, you know, his team, he's, he's got the potential. When you've got to start like that, you've got a chance. He's got to start. There he is, look, buried under the cow, but shaking his head. Too many mistakes. Well, there's curve five. Does he take a rocket science to figure, fuck, rocket science to figure out tapping the wall there and skidding like this? Yeah. Not good. Now watch the way this thing winds up into the curve. Now watch the back end come up. Whoa. That's so much friction and pressure going around six, and he's still not done. Almost but, backed it into six and yeah. then came off wrong. Yeah. And got all squarely into seven as well. Coach Brian Scheimer on the right, Mike Khan on the left. And Nick yeah. Cutting into oh, that's tough. Yeah, at right? least he's got something to tidy up in heat two. Next up, Jürgen Lewaka of Austria. Matej Juhart, Marcus Sama, Martin Laskovic are the four-man crew of this Austrian sled. Lewaka had a disappointing day in the two-man. 49-7, not what you exactly want, but let's see how he does with his drive down the track. He was only 22nd in the two-man first heat, which means he did not get a second heat, which is a major disappointment for a driver as experienced as him. Speed, not bad, but it's his nemesis is the start. He can't have, he can't be competitive without a start. He's late there. No, coming in now. 128.2, that's not bad speed at all from this Valner sled, and he holds the exit there, having to steer to do so, but keeps the sled in the straight line. Still pretty good. Could be in the top 10 at the moment. Considering the start time, this is real good. 12 good start. speed as well, 133.1. That's a good run, 56.61, yeah. and he's in that little knot of sleds, 10th, 11th, 12th, yeah, covered by five hundredths of a second. Yep, yeah. that's pretty good. Well, he does have the ability to get good speed. Yep, and he's got a big starting crew in the four-man as well. That uh, keeps him there swinging. Again, this is the exit of nine. Pressure yeah, bringing him back up so it hangs off the wall. And that's what causes crashes if you come down too early and it shoves you right back up. And nine is where we saw the crash yesterday of the Leichtenstein sled. Jürgen is just only compiled. Jürgen, if you had 10 hundreds better to start, you'd be in the top five. Next up is Chris Spring of Canada. The Canada two sled, Jeanic Carrier, Cody Sorensen, and Sam Giguer. So again, bringing the changes, the Canadians with their lineups in their three sleds. <laughs> A lot of locker room thumping and punching going on in the back of this crew. Springs had a good two-man result. Four-man. 47, it's great. Start speed, 50.3, one of the best. Let's see now if he can get through this. The first graveyard up the top of this track, curve five, coming up. Three, there's four. Now watch the runner tip, right here. Now he is building That's a That's as good lead. as anybody right there. That's as good as anybody. He's gone from seven to eight hundreds in front of Thomas Florschutz. And he got through that first albatross, but now he's plus eight. I think that's yeah. related to the conditions of the ice. Could well be. 128.1. Florschutz had 130.7 kilometers an hour there. No, oh, that's not good. Okay. Yeah, it's a lot of steering there. That's going to, and he's tipped in the uphill section. Yeah. This is going to put him another couple of tenths back. It does from 20 to 42 hundreds back. Still in the top nine positions, 10th place at the line. Just behind Holcomb. But considering considering the mistake he made, I think it's an 11 12, but straight away, that's, you know, still not bad. But that's the track, really I, I really said the track now, the ice is gone. Yeah. And everybody else just going to look at the skid here. This is, this is two tenths right there. He takes that two tenths away. He's down into the 30s. <laughs> Tom Delahunty about to explode. Uh, not a bad drive from the Springer. Thomas Florschut still our race leader from Alexander Zukov by a whisker. Oscars Melbard is threatening in third. And Chris Spring rounds out the top ten. 
Well, another Canadian sled up next at the Sankey Sliding Centre, Sochi in Russia. Justin Cripps, Tim Randall, James McNaughton, Graham Rimholm, the crew of Canada 3. I'm Martin Haber alongside me, John Morgan calling the action. And John Cripps, so impressive yesterday in the two-man. Epic starting with Neville Wright. Yeah, yeah. This young Canadian pilot has had a great season. It's a learning season for him. Of course, he used to be on just on uh, Lyndon Rush crew, and he was on that crew that won the bronze medal in uh, Whistler. And that's what you do. You make the transition from the back of the sled to the front. He's got a couple years on tour now and uh, had some great strides this season. Sled named after Poliahu, the Polynesian goddess of snow and ice. Who dreams that up? Wow, it, he was born in Hawaii. This oh, is all part of the heritage. She's a, she was a goddess who famously used to slide bamboo rafts down volcanoes there in the winter. Go. That's too much information. <laughs> but it fits well, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Good run old. through 10. Rough transition, not bad time. There's that little skid, but oh! He almost rolled into that curve. He was 15. 20 feet from being rolling into that curve. The back end of that sled was in the air. I bet you the team's talking about it down there. They felt that. <laughs> they felt that. So, Justin, it's okay. You're learning. He'll be much more competitive next year. This Canada three sled, he continues to improve like this. This is somebody you're going to hear from. This, this kid got talent. But another rookie driver. There's been a few of them come in this year, and he's really starting to prove his talent. Here we go. Here's the where the fun starts. On the right side of our screen, he's going to hit left side for him now he's going to get thrown over to the left side and that's the take on and look at the air yeah. that's where the crashes that's what the occurring. brake men refer to as the moment of silence yes. when the runners are off the ice and it either comes up right or it comes up wrong yeah. well, justin don't feel like you're the lone ranger yeah won't be the first won't be the well. last oscar's keeper man is the second of our young latvians just 20 years old yeah. this kid former brake man, and started driving John at the beginning of last year. Another superstar in the making here. Another, watch these start time. This could be 85 or 86. Both these Latvian teams are unbelievable at the start. That's a mistake though. Yeah, 45, look at the speed, 49.9's not bad, but I think those green numbers are gonna be red pretty quick. They got in that sled, they were still settling as they were on that first curve. See, now he's got no experience driving. He's 20 years old. But now, the advantage for him is that nobody else knows this track either, so he's in the same ballpark now. He's had great training times all week. He just snuck through curve five without a mistake. Still leading out of seven. Only ten back. That's reflective of the ice. He's late there. See the snow, snow coming, coming in. down outside. Yeah, but the snow shouldn't affect the competition one bit. This track is under a roof. Unbelievable facility they built here. This is a good-looking run from Kiba's Manis. He's still inside the top ten. This yeah, is ninth this is at good. the moment, and this great, is great speed. speed. This Nine. Matt Gray Primer Latvian sled, a brand-new development, 56.50, and he is ahead of the Olympic four-man champion. They had the same start times, 45, 44. Holcomb had all the mistakes, 2, 3, 4. He got through curve five without a problem. Wow. Superstar. I mean, that Mel yeah. that other guy is already a superstar. This kid, they're, they're saying nice things about him. The Latvians are really, really high on this guy. Watch the, the lateness here of getting in the sled, getting down. See the number two guy? Three guy can't get his feet in, and they're still trying to settle as they go around that first curve. That's not what you want to be putting push bars in around that first curve. And the guy who couldn't get his foot in, Rivas Brock's the most experienced man on that clue by some margin. I said he was 20, Keepers Manis. Not till April, he's not. 19. Still 19, yeah. Simone Batazzo of Italy with Simone Fontana, Constantino Ughi, and Francesco Costa on the crew. Some new muscle coming into the Italian lineup since Christmas, and it is starting to work wonders. Transformed his two man performance yesterday. Oh, whistles past the wall. This track narrows dramatically, John, from both sides, that, that bottleneck. Yeah, there's three different starts up there. And this, interesting right here, curve. Four, yeah. Not bad. Exit. 
And Simone, one of the best eyes and hands that uh, come out of the World Cup each weekend. He just doesn't have the starts. But he was a hundredth away from the leader at the start. But look at him now, three tenths back. It's not the start today. It's the drive or the kit. That's not bad there. That's real good there. Dives. Watch the transition, the oscillation up and down here. Coming up in the big curve right here. Up, down. There's three different curves in there. 15th. That run looked way better than the result. Yeah. Well, maybe so. he was overdriving it, or maybe they've just got the wrong runners for the ice conditions. Again, John, they've only done a dozen trips. It's it kind of guesswork. Or yeah, it's slightly it's about where he but. is in the World Championships yeah. and the World Cup, about 15th place. But you wouldn't know it by that ride. He was, that was pretty good. Off the start, only a hundredth off floor shots the leader. Look at the helmets. Look at the G-forces pushing the drive, the athletes left and right. Watch the transition here. Watch the energy of the sled. That's quiet. That was a great exit. Simone Gutazzo. Third of our German sleds is the two-man and four-man junior world champion. And Francesco Friedrich, two weeks ago, also won, three weeks ago now, also won the two-man senior world championship title. Marco Hubenbecker, Alex Rödinger, and Alexei Bogdashin, the 26-year-old, makes his first ever World Cup start as Martin Putz, was forced to pull out the team this morning. 4.89 getaway. Pretty good. You would never guess that's the first time that force was pushed together. Yeah, and Friedrich, the world champion in juniors and senior, no one's ever done that. He became the youngest ever pilot to win a world championship two-man competition when he did that in St. Moritz, but had a day yesterday that he really would like, would like to forget. And so oh, this, this is good. He's extending his advantage over Thomas Florschutz, his teammate. Now, they tied to win at their home track in Saxony at Altenburg a few weeks ago. 129.5, not as quick, but quick anyway. He's the 19th guy down the track, so he doesn't have great ice. This is a good run. He 500s puts, back. This could put himself oh. in the top four. This could put him into second place if he's not careful. No, no drifting, drifting away Drifting away now. Still great run. From the 19th position, he puts himself at a chance to win a medal. Right yes, there. Yes, he does. 56-2-9 slide. No wonder Christoph Langen looks happy with that. Yeah, that's a real good run. Much better for Christian Friedrich there. And there's a Marco Hukver, his signature sitting up on the yeah. side. He's on the six foot six. <laughs> so to stand up like that, I mean, he's... That's what he likes to do. And look at Friedrich as he gets out. 22 years old, muscles in places where most people don't have Look at this kid uphill. Yeah. This is this is 10 hundreds, 15 hundreds, That's the total graveyard of time there. Look at that. From the back, 15. look at this camera yeah. shot our crew gives us from the back. You don't know how steep it is going up that hill. That cost him a lot of time. Nevertheless, he is in fifth position. The four-man junior world champion. Next up for the Netherlands, Edwin van Kalke, Jeroen Pieck, Simon Jansma, Yannick Greiner, the four-man crew. Van Kalke injured a hamstring in the Whistler weekend pre-Christmas and gradually getting back to fitness. We got a decent start in the two-man race yesterday. Four very tall athletes. Fog coming in. You I can love see going, that. I love going to talk to the Dutch guy. Sieben Jansmaar makes me feel short, and I'm 6'6". Six, six. He's yeah. really a giant. Yeah. 494, not bad getaway. See? Same as our race leader, Thomas Florschutz. But next clock, he's got to be within 20 hundreds. And the key will be the exit of curve five. Right there, that's quiet. Six, good. Well, a Eurotech sled like the Canadians are using. 1,200s back. Drifting away now, though. As you said, John, track deteriorating, yeah. the ice getting rougher, which means yeah. more friction. It slows down the sleds more. These are good lines. This is... And Cocker's got some great drive lines here, just not fast. Ooh, little tap on the wall as well. Half he, a second back. And he can't really complain much because the guy in front of him is in fourth or fifth place. So yep. 16th best. Now they start to think about who's going to be in the field of 20. I got to yes. believe he's in the field of 20. You would think so. Yeah, from 16th, one, two, Justin Kritz in 20th, Jan Verba yeah. in 19th, Linden Rush in 18th might be in danger. I think that there's one more team that could sneak in here. 
and I think that Estrate will be the best of the next five sleds. So I think. I Thomas think Florschutz, the Germany R race leader from Alexander Zubkov and Oscar Smelbardis. 20 sleds down from this field of 26 in the first heat of our final World Cup encounter of the season. Down on the bubble, Rush, Berber, Cripps. I think there's one more sled, Estrada or maybe Kupchak. Corey Butner, maybe, yeah, for the USA. Courtney hasn't had the good four-man time. Let's see what we find, because there are surprises around most of the corners in this track. Milan Janoszak of Slovakia, Martin Tezovic, Vladimir Simic, and Adam Zavaki, the crew, had a couple of roles in training. They're a little beat up. These guys have been here for two weeks, official training for this race this week. Last week was the pre-Olympic training week as well, the international training week. That was the first time everybody was on the track. Yep. So, Milan has had some difficulty in this track. Usually he has a way of getting to the bottom, no problems, but he's rolled into that 14 once. Second place, I think he, uh, I think it was, I think he was same I spot. I was the same spot, yeah. Okay. Hit, so he'll be getting used to it now. Yeah. <laughs> so I, he, six kilometers an hour. Four tenths of a second back. This leaves him outside the top 20 at the moment. Snow isn't in that track. You can. There might be a little couple spots. It might be a little foggy as well. Yeah. There's not too many long yeah. straightaways here, though, to this, worry the drivers. This looks like ultimate. This is where he has his problems. Looks like, ooh, he was late off that. Yeah, got away with it, though. Yeah. A lot of fog and weather coming in here. One thing this can be, a weather Olympic Games competition. I tell you what, if we, were, if we were doing Alpine today, John, we'd be sitting twiddling our thumbs. The yeah. great thing about bobsled is the sidelines are much shorter, it's got a roof, and the lighting system yeah, like is absolutely it's stunning. Studio lighting the whole length it of is. the track. It's What they've done here is some, some barometer for people for the future. The start building, we can't, here's the start for the Slovakian team. They don't get the great starts. So watch the cohesion of the getting in, getting in that little bathtub, sitting down, the cat-like movements. Well, that's the final run of the season for Come Milan on. Janoszak. What about David Kupczyk of Poland? Mikhail Kasperovic, Pavel Moros, and Marcin Navara are the crew. How about the story Kurt Tomasiewicz told? These guys decided to take their bobsled and go through Poland into Russia and get over here. They drove. David, David Kupchak just shook his head. He said it was. Yeah. They won't do it again. Yeah. They got stopped more times than they were going. Well, this now is... they've got to do it to get home as well. Start time way back. 5.04, a little quicker than Milan Janoszak, but already leaves them outside the top 20, so he really needs a good drive now. And John, as you said, can the, do it. the track deteriorating, so the speed is, is going to be a little lower, so it makes it increasingly difficult for every sled to claw their way in. Curve 5, not bad. Steve Holcomb had that exit of Curve 5, he'd be a lot happier. A lot of teams, a lot of people love the better exit of Curve 5. Manuel Mahara. Still in 22nd place. Snow really coming down yeah, now. Look at it, it pelting down. Yeah. We're in the middle of a blizzard. I thought it was clearing up as we came up to our Copper Two booth. We're four floors up and we're right in the clouds. Mother Nature will play havoc with this competition. War, we've seen it all now. We've seen it. The only thing we haven't seen is cold weather. Still in 22nd place at the line. Does not make a second heat. Didn't yesterday in the two man. And uh, there you can see Vukrad uh, Yenovic of Serbia, who's not driving in the four-man competition. He's there with uh, David Kupchik's dad, Martin. Start. You know, look at the heads here now. Look at the little late flopping off this curve. You see any shoulders? You can see some heads bouncing around back there. That's not great aerodynamics. But it's still... Watch the airborne here. No, he got on the... You know, that feels pretty good. Choppy ice. I mean, one of the things here, of course, is that the track crew are all brand new. They haven't got decades of experience, and so they're learning the same as the drivers are learning about the track on their trips down. 23rd of our 26 starters is Lamin Dean from Great Britain. Dave Coleman, Ben Simons, and Andy Matthews are the four-man crew. Well, this is the younger of the two British pilots. The cohesion of the four-man bobsled start. Choreography on ice is what we like to say. 
Nice load, 503. Still leaves them outside the top 20, though. 21st start time. Let's see if Lamin Dean can drive himself into the competition. He's been dragged themselves to a flag stand, get a flag in front of the slap. We've been busting her chops yeah, about that. We've been talking about that. Next year, I shall come prepared. Next year, apparently, Gary Anderson, the uh, development coach and the uh, performance director, tells me that the sleds are all going to have a very different look. Good. Just looking at it. We should stick on only. 26.9 is not great speed, better than Milan Janoszak, but still in 23rd place. Skid, skid, skid is the story of this run so far. Oof. Hard take on there. And John, one of the things that we've seen this weekend is the most experienced sliders and drivers are the ones who have learned this track fastest, have worked out the tricks quickest. Well, experience. Yeah. 23rd place for Lamin Dean. Behind David Kupchik by two tenths of a second. Put the brakes on too quickly. Boy, if they go backwards there. If they go backwards, that's a long ways to go, to go backwards. Here's that uphill section. Look at the height, the little lows. You can see ice coming up. Look up the heads back there. Look at look at second, he's looking. I don't, I think he was ready to put the brakes on. I think he was as well. He lost count. He was sitting up ready to put the brakes on. We didn't see that. The guy's in the truck side. Good pickup there. Andy Matthews. Going to learn to count on both fingers. The problem is, there's less corners than the numbers. Corey Butner of the USA now. Dallas Robinson, Chris Langton, and Johnny Quinn. Johnny Quinn, another one of the athletes, shaved off his beard. Yeah. A lot of guys getting ready to go home. And Start 495, okay, 497. That's not bad. This is his chance to get into the top 20. He's had a very disappointing four-man season. He flies in a two-man. He was in sixth place yesterday at the end of the first run with the 21st best start time. And he, has, he was in sixth place. That was pretty remarkable. He fell three or four places in the second heat. 19th place at the moment, John. So still in the race. Out to 20 seconds, he's drifted too far That's away. That's late, late, and he's going to be late for three quarters. Two big oscillations there. Speed, not bad. 6,800s, he's... Nah, he's out of the position now, unless he finds some magical line down here. And I don't think the track's going to give him much, because it's all chewed up. Ooh. Into the finish. Speed, not there. That's... 23rd spot. That's disappointing. Did think he had a chance to get in. 27-23. How far away was he? He was... Actually, he was three tenths away from making the cut. That's a big margin. Big, big gap. This, this track is just grinding the speed out of the sleds now. There's the exit of... Look, at this is the... the, with the like this thing. Yeah. That's crash. An exit of nine, nine to ten. To ten. A little late there. Corey, still had a great season, Corey. I'm wondering a little about visibility as well now. Our cameras are looking a longer distance than most of the athletes. What about this sled, Patrice Savella Monaco? If they can get a half decent getaway, could he drive himself into the field? Ellie Lefort, Thibaut de Martin, and Jeremy Torre are the crew. Jeremy, one of the least French Christian names you'll ever find on the back handles there. Uh, his Patricia's nemesis is this start time. Ooh, we're not in. Yeah, quick. 25th best start. Yeah. That's... Well, it's, uh, every picture tells a story, and that caption certainly does. Good air to air profile by this uh, makeshift crew. High there in five. He just did what you're not supposed to do. Drive it up under five and come hit the right hand wall. Now, is this his regular four man sled? I'm thinking it might not be. Pretty loud, I'll tell you yeah. that. Up and down, three oscillations in that curve. Skidding. 25th place has not picked up a spot from the start. Let's yeah, start. 25th at the start, he got a good chance of finishing the 20th spot. And he will end up 25th position at the moment. 57 6 0. Brakes, 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 brakes. It's a. Uh, it is. Well, there must be about 400 yards that braking straight. And still, 
We've seen a couple of sleds shoot by the finish. Well, Steve, we've seen in the first day of the training go way up. Curve five, how not to do it. Look at all the spots on there where the sleds have hit. Yep. That's this graveyard of time. In the six, no chance. Final run for Patrice Savelle of his season. And next up, Nikolai Estrate, 33rd and last of the starters in the two-man yes, yesterday, drove himself into the race. Can he do the same again? This is his first race of the season, broke his wrist falling off a motorcycle pre-season and has not raced at all until this weekend, until yesterday. He's going to need a start. Like a five. If he gets under five with yeah. this crew, four ninety seven start. Four ninety six start, he's gonna have a chance. Considering the track conditions. Ooh, that's a skip. 502. 49 three is not a bad start speed. Only way is to be perfect in the exit of five. There's three. There's four. Now watch the runner tip as this slant exits right here. Pretty quiet. Not bad. A little, little bit of a back skid, not much. It's been a lot worse. He's still not doing it on the numbers side. He's way back. 23rd place off 21st at the start. 123 kilometers an hour. Pretty much nails the coffin lid down. He's, He's bringing not got it back. Speed. He's bringing it back. That's a good line. He might get it to 21. The next clock. These are good lines. Estrate, very experienced. No. I think he's going to be relegated to 21st to 22nd. Look at yeah. the snow coming in. <laughs> 22nd, 110. So the field is now set. Nikolai Strate doesn't pull off the giant killing act two days in a row. Perhaps a little too much to ask after all the four-man sleds have thundered down this ice. He finishes up 22nd of our 26 sleds. They got close at the start but could not find speed in this track. Didn't have great cohesion getting in. Watch a little bit of a Chinese fire drill, we call it. Look at everybody scrambling to get in there. The last guy in the sled was in one step too late, it looked like it. Well, a couple of those guys, like the driver, it is their first race of the season, season. so that's their first competitive jump. Well, he set the pace right from the word go, didn't he? We said that Thomas Florschutz is the first man down this track, which set the start record and the downtime record. And I said, we'll probably see it broken several times in this run. Just about everything John and I said in the first five minutes was completely wrong. Thomas Florschutz leads still, had the best of the ice and made the best use of it. Didn't have a great start time either compared to the other big shots. Well, he is the race leader. Seven hundreds of a second in front of Alexander Zubkov as they go into the final race runs of the year. There's the first heat standings then. Zubkov in second. Ostis Malbardis third, a further seven hundreds back. Kazinov, Friedrich, Jackson maybe even in with a shout at the medals. Stephen Holcomb in eleventh, the four-man Olympic champion, just trying to learn like everybody else so that when they come back in 12 months, they know a bit about this Sochi sliding center track. 18th, 19th, and 20th, Justin Kritz, hang on in. Below them from Milan Janoszak on down. Interested spectators only for the second heat as we go 20 down to one, last to fast, to take the final gold medal of the season. Will it be Thomas Florschutz? Will it be Alexander Zubkov? Or has fate got another twist up its sleeve for us? Join John Morgan and me, Martin Haven, to find out in the last round of the year here in Sochi.